All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be on this knife. And this is the Old Hickory Outdoor Folder made by Ontario Knife Company. And this is a new knife that came out relatively recently. And it's one that I was really looking forward to because I'm always happy to see another entrant to the market of American-made slip joint knives. And it's something where, you know, there's a great history of slip joint or traditional knives being made in America, but there aren't as many companies making them now, although there is kind of a renaissance happening. So I was excited to see that Ontario Knife Company with their brand Old Hickory was kind of jumping into the fray and making their own traditional slip joint knife. So first of all, this is not an expensive knife like the other knives in the Old Hickory brand. So the Old Hickory brand is uh, pretty much a bare bones. They all have, you know, simple wooden handles riveted uh, with, you know, carbon steel. I believe there might be some stainless steel on, in the kitchen knife line, but they are primarily a kitchen knife brand. But recently, they started making some outdoors knives. So some uh, fixed blades like a bird and trout and a hunting fixed blade and things like that. And then they came out with this folder. And the folder goes right in line with that same kind of uh, design philosophy. So you can see it has a really simple wooden handle and it is riveted. And then it has a simple carbon steel blade. Uh, so the blade steel on this is 1075. Uh, so it's, it's not a super high carbon steel. It's certainly not a super steel, uh, I'd say on the lower end of steels. Now, interestingly, I've used this, you know, mostly for just normal cutting, but I did cut a little bit of venison uh, with it and it got some patina, as you can see, but not quite as much as I would have expected. I thought that it was going to patina uh, really quickly and strongly, but it is definitely a carbon steel. It is not a stainless steel. It will rust if you allow it to. Now, as for the design of this knife, I actually, I think it's pretty good. Um, I like that it's a nice, simple utilitarian uh, spear point or maybe towards a drop point blade. It's not a very pointy spear point as they come. And then the handle is relatively simple, like most traditional knife handles are. Uh, it's straight and then got this scallop here where your pinky finger can rest when you're holding it. And I can get a, a pretty solid full four finger grip on this. Uh, although of course, when you're using a knife, it's really more use, more commonly like this. And this is, I think, where the grip is, is actually especially good. Um, you can kind of get your pinky and ring fingers into that scallop at the end, and it helps hold it into the palm of your hand. So I was really happy to see, like I say, a, a new American-made slip joint on the market. But there's some things that I, I don't love about this knife. So first of all, like I said, like the other old hickory knives, it is not a fancy knife. It is not made to, you know, fine exacting standards. Uh, there are some sharp corners on these liners. You can see that the wood doesn't quite match up with the liners in uh, a lot of places. Um, the rivets are, you know, I actually like riveted handles. They, it's not going to come apart, that's for sure, but they're not as good looking as, you know, a pinned or peened uh, handle. Now, actually, there aren't any gaps on the back spring. Hopefully that's focusing for you there. So that's actually a really nice thing. Um, but what that does, is it makes it really tight. There's no blade play at all. Very, very solid. And so it's kind of rough on opening and closing. It is definitely not smooth to open, especially from half stop to full open. Nothing like a case or a GEC. But there is the upside to being riveted that, you know, as this is a relatively inexpensive knife that I don't think you buy as part of a collection usually, but to be a user, uh, the rivets will make it so you can really put this to use and not worry about it, you know, getting loose or coming apart. Now, the grind on this knife is also not very thin. So if you 
hopefully you can see that there. It is relatively thick seaming behind the edge. Now, I did not measure it with calipers, but if you look at the tip there and then at the heel, it does not look like it comes to a super thin edge, which is one of those things that people um, like about traditional knives is that they tend to cut well. They tend to be ground relatively thinly and cut well, uh, like especially GEC knives and also case knives. You can see the difference there in the thickness behind the edge, uh, even at the tip. So doesn't cut super, super, um, smoothly it's not that it won't work it certainly will work as a knife but it's just not the you know thinnest ground knife out there now they call this a nail hole so this is a cutout in the in the blade to help you open it uh, certainly you could put your nail in there you can definitely get a lot of purchase on it being that it's literally a hole through the blade but i think it works better you know i like to be able to pinch open a slip joint like that and this nail cut out or nail hole makes it so you can get a lot of purchase when pinching it open so i do like that you can pinch this knife open but that nail hole being at the end of the blade versus you know on on something like a spyderco where is it there it is something like a spyderco a modern knife that has a hole in the blade it's towards the heel of the edge so you don't have as much of the hole in the area where you actually use the cut whereas being that this nail hole is at the end of the blade it's right where you're cutting and so for example cutting up venison you know you're getting a bunch of um, material in there and it can even kind of catch in there so um not i guess ideal for cutting I think that you could pinch this knife open very easily without this nail hole being there. So, you know, it's it's not really necessary, but I can see why they put it there because it is so uh, traditional to have a nail nick or in this case, a nail hole on a knife like this. So um, the, the last thing I meant to mention about the handle here is like other old hickory knives, it's very blocky. So. Um, there's a very slight amount of chamfering along the edges of the handles, um, but even compared to a Sodbuster, so this is a case Sodbuster Jr. and then a Great Eastern Cutlery Bullnose, these uh, you know Sodbusters tend to be on the thicker and blockier side of traditional knife pattern handles, and both of these have more of that rounding, uh, more sculpting than the outdoor folder here. So it, it's not the most comfortable of handles. Now, I, I don't think it's gonna make a huge, you know, difference when you're cutting, particularly if you're just getting this as a user uh, or literally an outdoor folder. But it is something where, again, people tend to like that these traditional knives have very comfortable handles and uh, it's not as much the case on this old hickory. Now, speaking of price, this is not an expensive knife as things go, certainly as uh, American-made knives go. It's about $40 from Amazon, which is actually where I bought this. You can buy it from Ontario's website and I'm sure other dealers and things like that, but uh, Ontario had it for like $55, which I wouldn't have bought it for that. But I bought it for about $40 on Amazon. And the thing is, the case Sodbuster Jr. you can get for pretty much that for pretty much $40. Um, so I, I think that the outdoor folder compares not super favorably to the case Sodbuster Jr. And then, you know, certainly there are issues with availability. GEC hasn't made these since 2020. Well, they made the Sud Buster in 2022, I guess. Uh, but GEC doesn't make these all the time. They're not always available. But the Bullnose, when I got this, they were about $70. Now, I'm sure that they are going to be more than that the next time these come out. Uh, then These are going up in price even from dealers. So, you know, maybe let's say $80 or $90. If it fits within your budget, I, I think you'd probably be happier spending twice as much on the GEC than you would on the old Hickory. 
Now, you know, certainly there might be reasons not to. You know, this has a non-synthetic handle, a natural handle, which a lot of people really like. Um, it has a different aesthetic in a way uh, with the, you know, very simple handle. Um, but I think if I were to, you know, want to be buying a relatively budget-friendly American-made uh, user, you know, working traditional slip joint knife, I don't really think that I would pick the old hickory out of these three, certainly, uh, even considering that the GEC is twice the price or, or more. Um, I think that if it's in your budget, this is the best option. If it's not in your budget and you have to choose between these two at about the same price, about $40 each, honestly, I would probably choose the case. Now, I've actually had great experiences with the warranty uh, with Ontario before. Uh, case, you know, is well known for their good warranty. GEC always seems to do a good job with their warranty as long as it's not a store knife. Um, so, you know, if you get one that's a complete dud, I'm sure no matter which way you go, you could, you know, get it replaced and everything. But uh, I think that this is an interesting knife. Like I said, I am glad that there are more options coming onto the market of American-made traditional slip joints. And so I'm happy to have gotten this one, but I, I don't think that it compares quite as favor favorably at that $40 range. I would, if this knife was $30, it would be a huge, huge difference. Uh, there's just nothing really in that range in American made slip joints. And so if they were able to have, you know, brought this to market at that price range, it would really be the only thing in that range. And I think it would be a great deal at that price at $30. At $40, I'd probably go with the Sodbuster Jr. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Leave any comments you have. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this knife. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click the bell and select all so you know when I post new videos. Check out my other social media. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Knife Thoughts and my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on knives like this and knife-related topics. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.